Okay, let's go ahead and plot these points and sketch the graph of this equation. So here's x and y. Let's plot the intercepts first, negative 4, 0, and 6, 0. And we have negative 5 plus or minus square root 11. The square root of 11, well, should be a little bit bigger than the square root of 3, or square root of 9, which is 3. Let's mark off some points here. So at uh, negative 5, we're up a little bit more than 3, and a little bit lower than negative 3. At 7, we get plus or minus square root 11 as well. So here's 7, and so we're up at the same altitude here. And then at 8, we're at plus or minus square root 24, which is just shy of 5. So roughly there. And then we also have the point down below. And at negative 6, we're at the same altitude as well. So we have that. So if we plot enough points, we have this no man's land in here that we talked about before. And we would get something that looks like that. So we'll learn this shape. This, the graph of this equation is actually called a hyperbola. You may have seen those before, depending on what you've had. Now, from this graph, it, it looks like we have symmetry about the x-axis. Um, so when it comes to symmetry, we definitely, it uh, looks like we have that. What about symmetry about the y-axis or origin? Well, it doesn't seem to be the case. We're, we're sort of off. But once again, if, if I look at the line x equals 1, then it looks like I am symmetric about the line x equals 1. Okay, so we'll talk about symmetry uh, next. Okay, testing for symmetry. Well, our graph definitely appeared to be symmetric about the x-axis. And, and so to show an, the graph of an equation is symmetric about the x-axis, we have to show that if the point x, y is on the graph, then its reflection about the x-axis, namely x negative y, is also on the graph. So let's start and suppose x comma y is on the graph of this equation. And that means that this equation is satisfied. So when I plug in the x and y, uh, this equation is true. Now I'm going to substitute this point into the equation. In other words, I'm just going to replace y with its opposite. And we have to try to see if this is going to be true. Well, sure enough, look what happens. The negative there gets squared, uh, gets squared away. And so the equation I end up with matches the original equation, which means x and y make this true is going to give me that x and the opposite of y make this true. So in other words, uh, if this is on the graph, then this is on the graph. So we've proven that the graph of this is symmetric about the x-axis. So the pattern we saw when we plotted our points is actually true for every single point. Let's talk about y-axis. Can we, uh, it certainly didn't look symmetric about the y-axis, and, and what point will disprove it for us? Well, remember, we had the x-intercepts. We found two x-intercepts only. We had negative 4, 0, and 6, 0. Well, if this graph were symmetric about the y-axis, if negative 4, 0 were on the graph, uh, 4, 0 would have to be on the graph. Okay, which is not. So we could say since the point negative 4, 0 is on the graph, but its reflection across the y-axis, namely 4, 0, is not, the graph is not symmetric. About the y-axis. 
And well, actually, this same point will work for origin as well. Because the point symmetric about negative, or excuse me, if I reflect the point negative 4, 0 through the origin, I take the opposite of both the x and the y coordinates. Well, the opposite of negative 4 is 4, and the opposite of 0 is still 0. And so this exact same point shows us it's also not symmetric about the origin. All right, so that'll do it for Checkpoint Quiz 1.3.